In its official, Speaker Pelosi has directed the House Judiciary Committee to draft articles of impeachment against the 45th President Donald Trump, moving this process closer to a floor vote. The Speaker made the announcement on Thursday following weeks of testimony about how the President and his allies pressured Ukraine to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden and Biden's son. The facts are uncontested. The President abused his power for his own personal political benefit at the expense of our national security by withholding military aid and crucial Oval Office meeting in exchange for an announcement of an investigation into his political rival. President Trump immediately responded on Twitter, claiming his conduct has been totally appropriate. Most congressional Republicans, who at times have been uneasy with this president, remain firmly at his side, with few evident cracks. Today, with the speaker announcement, she has weakened this nation. It was not new news. They always had this pre-written timeline from the day they got sworn in. Joining us tonight, Kimberly Atkins, senior news correspondent for WBUR, Boston's NPR news station. Josh Dawsey, White House reporter for The Washington Post. Susan Davis, congressional correspondent for NPR. And Carl Hulse, chief Washington correspondent for The New York Times. The tense nature of this moment, it was revealed at the speaker's Thursday news conference. Do you hate the president, Madam Speaker? I, I don't Collins. hate anybody. Representative Collins, the reason I am. House, we don't hate anybody, not anybody in the world. So don't, don't let me accuse you. I was raised in a way that is full, a heart full of love and always prayed for the president. And I still pray for the president. I pray for the president all the time. So don't mess with me when it comes to words like that. Carl, that quote. Don't mess with me. This is a speaker who reluctantly came to this impeachment inquiry. Now she's the face of it. She's out in front. What does that scene, that exchange with James Rosen from Sinclair Broadcasting, tell you about Speaker Pelosi and this political moment? Well, she's tough, that's for sure. This was a, a question meant to provoke a response, and it got one. Don't mess with me, I think, will be the catchphrase in Washington for quite a while. I also think she wasn't feeling that well that day, and it, it sort of provoked a sharper response. But I think it was beneficial to her because this was unscripted. She didn't know it was going to come, and it allowed her to lay out the case that this isn't for her, and I think very credibly, that this isn't about her feelings towards the president. This is about the Constitution. I think in some ways it gave her a good opening to do this. And you're right. I mean, she has come around to this reluctantly, but we all know Nancy Pelosi, and once she makes up her mind, she is going to move forward, and uh, that's what they're doing here. Or how's Democrats comfortable with the decision to move forward when you're talking to them behind the scenes at the Capitol, Sue? Yeah, I mean, they really are. I think if you go back and look at the vote that they had to uh, officially, you know, authorize the investigation and, and formalize the process in the committees, that kind of told you where the caucus was. I mean, every vote on an impeachment is kind of a test vote. One thing that Pelosi did tell members this week in a closed-door meeting is she told them, I'm not going to whip this vote. They, they're looking at the vote on articles of impeachment similar to the way they look at votes on war. It's a matter of conscience. It's going to be up to you. That being said, Said, Pelosi wouldn't be moving forward unless she was fairly competent. When they when they go to the floor, they will have the votes that they need. I was at the Capitol, Kim, and I ran into Vice President Pence on uh, a few days ago, and he was about to rally the House Republicans at their morning meeting. And you don't see many cracks in the GOP. What explains that unity when you're out there reporting? Well, it's unity on both sides. I mean, the GOP has galvanized around this issue that this is an impermissible inquiry, uh, just casting dispersions on the legitimacy of it. Uh, and they've moved away now and because it's harder to keep arguing about process the more, the farther you go. And certainly once articles of impeachment are on the table. So they're settling in on this. It's the same message that President Trump is giving. It's the same message that President Trump's campaign is spending millions of dollars on that this is just a democratic what effort. What are they doing to, in terms of campaign spending? There's been tens of million dollars on Facebook ads alone, uh, the, the, the campaign. And so, and the message there is that the Democrats are trying to undo the election, the Democrats are hate Trump, and the Democrats are trying to be un-American. And it's a pretty solid, simple message that Republicans can get behind, and that's what you'll see. Both sides are, are lock solid.
Josh? If you talk to folks on the campaign, they say record fundraising numbers. They say for Trump supporters, they feel he's been victimized. They feel that this is an unfair process, and they are promoting every single day. They're sending solicitations, and they're raising quite a bit of money. It's not saying that will be the end-all, be-all for this election. But if you talk to people around the president, uh, in the beginning of this process, there was a deeper fear than there is now. I think if you, if you talk to some of his closest advisors, they say it's fait accompli. He's going to be uh, impeached. He's not going to be convicted in the Senate. They think they can turn the tables in the Senate and make a more compelling case, and they think that this will end in a place that will not be fatalistic to him. Now, I'm not sure that's true. I think we've got to wait and see how it plays that? out. But Well, you think about the jobs numbers Friday, Josh. Right. The president got some positive jobs numbers. He's seeing the economy in a solid right. spot. Is that what gives the White House that kind of optimism? What gives the White House that kind of optimism is the fact Republicans have not broken. Early on, when the transcript came out, you saw folks who were reticent to go out and praise the president. You even saw some of the president's defenders. Lindsey Graham made comments that were, you know, we've got to wait and see how this plays out. There weren't a lot of people on television for a couple of weeks as the facts were emerging. And now you see the GOP kind of in a, in a cavalry behind the president, in some ways more unified than they have been in the past. Yeah, I think if you go back to the Clinton impeachment with the Clinton White House, the whole time they're worried about Democrats. And even when it got to the Senate, Democrats like Joe Lieberman, they were worried how they were going to react. They're, I think you're right about the White House. They, the Republicans are solidly behind there. I think Nancy Pelosi, in some way, also motivates them. You know, they want to push back against her. They want to push back from the uh, people who testified this week, which they thought was a, a waste of time.